Hey guys, and welcome back for another video that we're going to be making in regards to DayZ and how to add stuff to your server. Now, this is going to be a very easy to do tutorial on how you can put a simple weapon into your server and how to make it spawn uh, with the proper equipment associated with it and all the proper attachments. Um, a quick uh, let's go over some quick things first of all, and again, uh, for those of you who've watched my tutorials before, you'll know what this program is, but for those of you who have not, this is FileZilla, and FileZilla is a, uh, is a FTP uh, connector that will connect you to your FTP for your server, That will this will allow you access to the files that are associated with it. Now, you can actually use something such as your website's main files and go in through that way, but I personally prefer the more hands-on approach of just using uh, FileZilla and connecting to my FTP. Now, when you first connect to your FTP, you're going to see um, this, right? You're going to see probably the IP address. Now, since I run three servers, uh, there, one of them is listed here. You're going to have to find the IP that corresponds to the correct server you're associated with. Mine right here is the 192.154.228.152, and uh, that will connect me directly to my server. Now, uh, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go through, and you need to find the types that are associated. You're, you're going to need to find the file that's associated with the with the uh, mod that you've added. As you can see, this file here, I've got quite a few of these at 215s, blah, blah, blah. Now, um, what you need to do is go through and see which file is associated with the um, program that you've downloaded or the mod that you've downloaded. And the easiest way I found to do this is go through and look at the key on it and the key is usually labeled as to um, what it uh, what it goes to so as you see I'm looking through and we're looking for the uh, we're looking for the TTC by key there it is right there and this is for the you can check add-ons and it'll show you all the things right there there's pistols rifles this is the PBOs under no circumstances should you ever mess with the PBOs unless you're absolutely sure of what you're doing, because the PBO is the is the guts of what makes a file a file. You can have all this text and JSONs and stuff over here, but the add-ons and the PBOs are what make the file the file. So we're going to go into the info here, and uh, thankfully, um, this mod author actually, which is uh, more obviously it's Morty's weapons, actually has. Uh, cut his file into a lot of different stuff. So here's your traders text that you can do, and here's the central economy. But what we're more interested in is we're going to go into the Morty CE file, and we're looking for these two files here. And this is the CFG spawnable types and the types folder. Now, let me uh, go over really quick what the types, what these two files do. So in every single DAISY server, you'll have what is called a types.xml. Your types.xml tells <coughs> tells your CLE, which is your central loot economy, what it needs to spawn on your map and how many of the items that it's going to spawn. So let's take a quick look at this and let's go into the types. What we're gonna how we're gonna do this is go to view edit. Now uh, a little fair warning, I'm using another mod which you'll see right now and it's called um, this is called Notepad++. Notepad++ literally just makes everything, breaks everything down into a much easier uh, system than a normal notepad. So let's take a look at the type that we have here. Now a type is, uh, a type is going to, is, is like I said, it's telling your server what it wants to spawn and it's telling it what it needs to spawn and how many of them and how many it's going to uh, put into the game. So let's find something that I recognize. Right? Okay, the, let's try that. Let's do the HK416 Black. Now, the type name is the item's name as it is, is associated in the file, in the PBO. It's not how it's associated in the uh, 
uh, game. This could be something, this could be a HK416 in game, but to identify the PBO that it, or to identify the, the part of the PBO that it's going to use, it needs to have this, find this name. And you need to put this entire name into the type name. If you don't, your, your item will not spawn. Now we have a nominal. Nominal is uh, how many of the item are how many of these items, how many of this gun is going to spawn on the map at any given time. Now, let's say you have this down to one. That means there will be only one of these guns on the on the uh, the map until someone comes and picks it up. And this is important because if you want to ensure that you have a specific really, really powerful gun that there is a very limited supply of them, you can make this nominal one and min one, and there will only be one on the server at a given time if you adjust your uh, flags down here. We'll get to that in a second. Now, lifetime is how long when the item is dropped will it stay in that place or if it, i believe i believe it's that or yeah i believe it's how long when the weapon is dropped on the ground how long it will stay in that spot usually i don't mess with that because unless i want to make a item that takes days to respawn which that's kind of silly, but I guess if you wanted to do that to limit the number of guns on your server, they could do that. I'm not going to judge. Um, so now let's look at the next thing, which is restock. Restock is when the weapon is picked up from its spawn point, how long before another one will respawn somewhere on the map with the associated tier files. So this one is set to 1800. This is set in seconds. So you're looking at 1,800 seconds before another one of these will pop on the map somewhere else. The same thing goes for lifetime. The lifetime of the weapon will take 10,800 seconds before that thing goes away from wherever it was dropped. So if you kill a player and he's got one on him, the player drops the gun and the gun will lay there for 10,800 seconds until it deletes itself and then you come back to the restock and the min. The restock and min, or actually, to the, excuse me, the uh, nominal restock min, that's where that comes into play. So when it deletes itself, the restock looks and says, hey, I've got 1,800 seconds before another one of these needs to be popped in. Um, cool. All right, so let's go to the min. The minimum, the min stands for minimum. This is the minimum amount of these guns, which are on the map at any given time, before it decides that it needs to start respawning these guns. Now, the nominal just means that there could be six of them on the map. You could pick up two, and then the server starts saying, hey, we, we've lost this. We need to put more of this out there. Think of it like a grocery store. If you've got six cans of soda on the shelf, and you don't start restocking your shelves until you get down to four, until you go to the back and get more, that's what that represents. Okay, quantity min and quantity max. This is not really important for guns. Usually, you don't want to tinker with this too much. You leave it at negative one. What this basically means is there will be one of the guns spawn at any given time. It will always be one gun. Cost is the weight of the weapon of if you want it to be more important to, to, to prioritize a loot spawn um, over something else. Let's say you've got two loot spawns and um, you have an SG-552 and a HK-416. What's going to, if this is set to 100 and this is set to 100, then if both of these are on the same spawn point, which is they are tier three, tier four military, what this is going to do is it's going to give them a, it's going to flip a coin and say, okay, well, one of these is going to spawn. Depending on which one, if they've both gone below their min, which they're both the same, SK, uh, SG-552 and HK-416 are both six and four, it will flip a coin if all of them, if two of them are picked up. And it will say, okay, I need to respawn this or one of these on the spawn point, which I have available. So that's what cost means. Cost is the weight of the item and the, it's the value of the item, the importance of the item to spawn on a spawn point. Okay, 
So now we go down to flags. Now flags is very important if you want to um, if you want to set up uh, criteria and limits and limit and limiters on what is spawning on your map. Used to be there was this that you did have these kind of flags in Daisy uh, prior to um, them making the changes, and these flags actually kept things like uh, M4s and AKs at a very low number because the 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 game was saying, okay, this stuff is here. I don't need to make any more because it's counting that. So let's go through the flags. Flags count in cargo. Flags count in hoarder. Flags count in map. Count in player. Crafted. Deloot. Now, flags count in cargo means if you have it in the back of a car, if you have an HK416 in the back of the car, that it's going to count this, it's going to count against your, uh, against your nominal. Basically it's saying that if I've got one of these counted, if I've if I'm counting at one of these, it it will say, okay, well this is this is uh let me try to explain this easier. Okay, let's say Jimmy's got Jimmy's got a HK four one six, all right, and if you've got um he Jimmy goes to us goes to his car and Jimmy puts that HK four one six in the car. Now the game is now counting the nominal it's counting it as part uh, it's it's counting on that nominal as long as that flag is set up that way it will count towards the nominal and it will not count as a restock it will not uh, say it needs to be restocked so basically as long as jimmy's got that gun in his car the game will never spawn another one on the map is the easy is the english way of saying it as long as jimmy's count as long as a flag is ticked saying he's got it it will never it will count against the nominal and it will never respawn um, the only way you're going to have a nominal of an item spawn on the map another one or it's going to start getting below that to starting working its way towards that min is if it if the uh, criteria does not stick to one of these flags Count in a hoarder means it's in a container or a tent somewhere on the map. Uh, cargo just cargo is also like I believe your backpacks and stuff. Um, so if you've got one in your backpack, it'll count. I believe it, it's either hoarder or cargo. Don't quote me; it's one of the two. <clears throat> but if you've got these flagged again, your nominal will not decrease and it will stay that high until the other another criteria is uh, met. Now count and map this. It will always be flagged, always. There's nothing you can do about it. And if you, I don't really know and have never experimented with what happens if you set that to zero. But count on map means that, uh, again, it's counting towards the flag. So this is directly correlated with this. This is directly tied in. So you're going to have, um, as long as there, this is what determines if it hits the minimum. As long as there's all six on the map and it's counted as counted on the map, uh, then it will not reach that minimum. I believe what will happen, and I'm just hypothesizing here, but I believe that if you get take away the count map, that it will constantly spawn them no matter what. Uh, count in player is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, this That d detects if a player is carrying around an HK416, then it will again count towards the nominal. Um, crafted and Deloot. Now let's go over Crafted and Deloot. Crafted and Deloot are two completely different things and in order to uh, show that we're going to go back down here we're going to go into my MP missions and we're going to go to Deer Isle and we're going to go into database and we're going to go into tops we're going to open that up real quick now what we're specifically looking for here is as you, this is my main servers types we're going to control F we're going to look up crafted and make that equals parentheses one and we'll hit enter and it will look through my files and find something that says that it needs to be that it's crafted one okay so we have here ragged eye patch now as you can see it's nominal is zero minimum is zero hmm doesn't have any other flags but it has crafted one interesting okay well let's look at something else what about uh let's look for another one the next one I have is Human Skull, which is a novelty item, and let's see, okay, here's a good one, Armbands. 
armbands which are crafted from uh, rain coats. Armbands equals crafted equals one. Now the nominal and the min of these items is set to zero. All right, so let me explain what this does. So crafted as items is you've pretty much picked, figured it out already. Hopefully, crafted as items that you've already that you can only craft, meaning it will not appear in the game, and the only way to create one is to craft to get one is to craft it. Now, why you set the nominals and the mins to zero is because there's not going to be any on the map. You don't have to worry about a spawning in your map itself because it's a crafted item you can make as many of them as you want to now you do need to set a lifetime for it because the lifetime will determine if the item is dropped on the ground and how long it will stay in that place until it deletes itself or until map cleanup is allowed to go in and clean it up so crafted is actually uh crafted items that can only be put together now dilute is something totally different um dilute is called dynamic event loot this is things like uh on my server a famas a famas is a d loot item now uh this is something i discovered person uh, on my own i learn a lot just by tinkering on my server and I, I look up some things but for the most part i figured out on my own um so dynamic event is things like choppers or static or uh uh, dynamic police cars or whatever have you you have on the server that is a dynamic event now in the case of the famas it is a dynamic event and we check the usage name and the usage name is military now what this signifies is that this will only spawn at military dynamic loots at any given time no matter what it will only spawn at those dynamic loots for military now we can also go to uh, dynamic elute, dynamic loots again, dyna or dynamic event elutes. And if you go through my files, you will find, oh, there we go. Here is the scout or the pioneer rifle. As you can see, it has a nominal of five, minimum of three, lifetime of 2800, cost of 100, and again, count in map and D loot. Now, the dynamic event loot area it's going to actually spawn at now is police. So, <clears throat> this is how you, you separate uh, your dynamic events in your game to where you want certain things to spawn. On the Deer Isle map, you have uh, Pinky's Food Van, and that is actually a dynamic event for food. So, you can actually, depending on the usage name that you have, uh, you'll ha you can set up dynamic events for pretty much anything you want. Uh, if I wanted to make a random sea chest spawn somewhere on the map and make it a dynamic event, I could do that because I could have that sea chest spawn in and it could be in a random area and it could have dynamic event loot set by the event loot that I put in the game and tell it to spawn there. So that is uh, how your flags um, work. Now we can continue right here. Category name is weapons. This is also important because you want uh, you want to have your categories set. Uh, your categories are going to tell you um, what kind of items you have spawning in that area. So if you have military spawns and you tell the game, "Hey, I want guns spawning at my military spawns," that's what it counts under. If you have weapons and you have uniforms or clothes set in there, or like tactical bacon, tactical bacon will spawn at military loots, but it also has a certain number of areas on a map that are set up to spawn weapons or clothes or food or industrial items or what have medical loot or what have you depending on where it's set up this tells it what kind of spawns it's going to use when it creates this weapon into the game this tells it what area the weapon will or the item will spawn into so in this case it's police and this game is case it's industrials and farms in this case down here it's there is nothing because it's a car and that is actually a uh, that is actually a dynamic event that will that's another event that we'll get into much much later and so but here is a door and you can see tag floor uh, usage name industrial category name vehicle parts so the vehicle parts category it will spawn in areas that have been designated as vehicle parts. Now you can remove this and change it to whatever you want to, but just bear in mind, you can have things like freaking vehicle parts spawning on shelves that they are way too big for, and it'll really just mess up your loot and 
in the end, it'll look awful, and because it's you can have situations where care, players can't even get items because they're jammed into loot spawns that they're too small for. Now, tag name. Tag name is another uh, dynamic that is set up for loot spawns. In certain cases, you'll have uh, tag names for like here. This is set for tag name floor. Why? Because it's a car. Why? Because again. They want to make sure that they have enough room to spawn this item in on it. So you have a tag name of floor. Uh, you will see everything from floors to shells. Let's actually look up and see what kind of tag names we can find. We got tag names of uh, floor. Tag name floor. Uh, this is all car parts. See here. Car part, car part, car part, car part, car part. Oh, there you go. Uh, sneakers. Tag name floor. Tag name floor. Tag name floor, 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 shelves, spaghetti can. So that means that this will only spawn on shelves in buildings or areas that have been designated to shelves. So um, spark plugs will only spawn on shelves area. That way you will only have them, again, spawning in shelves area. So let's get back to what we were originally doing. And uh, as you can see, all this is set up for, we went over flags, we went over categories, went over usage name. Now let's go over values. Now, values determine the tier of the item or the tier of the area that you're going to spawn an item in at. Um, we'll, let's let's real quick. Hold on, let me uh, let me pull. I should have. I'm sorry. I should have been prepared for this. So we are looking for server files for my map that I use, and we're going to set up Deer Isle. All right. So this is Deer Isle. And this is the entire map of Deer Isle. And as you can see over here, it has a tier zone list. And these tier zones, I don't know if you can see it or not, but go from tier 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now, what does that mean? Well, thankfully, uh, Mr. John McLean here has actually who is the map creator, and if you do use Deer Isle, I, I strongly suggest you give him a little of, this is an amazing map. Um, the map tiers determine where the item will spawn on the map. So, let's say we have potatoes, and we want potatoes to only spawn in uh, Tier 1, which is uh, Crotch Island, down, down over here, Tier 1. And you only want to spawn it in tier two, which is the starter uh, starter island. And you want them to spawn in, uh, you know, tier three, which is the main island. Okay, so what we do is we go back into our into our tiers, and we change this from tier three to tier four. We'll change it to tier one, tier two, and tier three. We'll make a new one down here, and I'll just do this because I'm not saving this. But we'll make another one and make this tier one, two, and three. And that's how we associate. That's how we tell the game. I want you to only spawn this here. This is really useful if you have areas like Chernars, which have uh, things like uh, you have things in Chernars, which are things like uh, contaminated areas, and you can set up contaminated areas over here. I'll get into that in a different, different story or a different video because I really don't do Chernars much anymore. I do a lot of Deer Isle, um, but yeah, you can. That's that's basically how you set up your items to where you can tell them exactly where you want it to spawn and how you can get it to spawn there. It just like changing your tiers up. Now, what happens if we don't designate a tier? What if we literally do this and we get rid of the tiers? Well, what that's going to do is you've suddenly not, you've suddenly told the game that the modifiers it has to use are weapons and military spawn points. Tiers don't matter. So it can spawn anywhere on the map at any given time. So in, in essence, if you want to specialize your tier and where it's loading the item into, then you choose your tier itself. Now, if you want it to just spawn everywhere, such as if you've got a uniform that you want to just spawn all over the map, as long as you set your nominals high enough and you set your minimum high enough and you set everything else up and you remove the value of the tier of the item spawn, it will spawn anywhere on the map and you don't have to actually do anything to uh, worry about it spawning in selected areas and you know cutting itself off from the outside world because it's out on like 
Tissy or it only tier three or it only spawns in a freaking car in the middle of Cherno and you know that sort of thing. So now let's get into the uh, second part of this video. And the second part is going to get is going to go over the uh, spawnable types. Now every map that is created well Jesus Christ I've lost the <laughs> I'll give you a second. Every every map in the game has a or every item in every single thing in the in the game has a spawnable type. Now a spawnable type is different from your types. Now as you can see here, um, everything on this is a spawnable type of your map. Let's actually look at the spawnable types for the map itself. And we'll go into the data or we'll go into the uh, mission file, which is the MP mission. And we're going to look for player uh, CFG spawnable types. So let's look at the spawnable types for um, Deer Isle. <coughs> now, what a spawnable type does is it tells a item what you want to spawn in it. And furthermore, it sets the amounts of the item or the chance of the item spawning in that. So let's look up real quick uh, nine volt batteries because I've did some custom work here. Now, as you can see here, um, I haven't really did much in the way of changing, but this is a good example. So personal radios, everybody knows that you're running around, you can find a personal radio and there's a chance that a battery will spawn in that personal radio. So what I have here is a, a type name, which is, again, it's going to use the exact name of the item you're trying to put into the game, which is personal radio. Now we get into the rest of it. Attachments. Attachments to, is the attachments that will be on the item that you're spawning. This is extremely important if you're doing guns and I'll get into that in a moment. But here as you can see I've got attachments, item name, and then attachments closer. So what this means is this is telling me that it has a 70% chance of every personal radio on the map of spawning this item inside of it which is a 9 volt battery and which means that it will have a 100% chance of spawning this item but let's go into something else such as a gift box small the gift box small has a very large amount of stuff that it can actually sp spawn as you see here uh, what this says is what this is saying right here is every single small gift box that you pick up is going to have a chance as listed below to spawn one of these items. So let's go through it real quick. You have a 35% chance of spawning this category of items. And in this category, you have a 50% chance of getting a universal light or a weapon light. So you've got a 50% chance, like a coin flip here to get either one of those. Here, we've got a 80% chance of this item spawning when you open up a small gift box. You can see it's related weapons and such. Um, here, We've got, interesting, here we've got a 20% chance of spawning a chem light. We've got a 20% chance of it spawning the head torch category and a 20% chance of spawning the uh, magazine category. So as you can see, every single item that you find is going to have a chance. Every single item in this category is separated into areas that will have a separate chance or uh, basically a dice roll of getting this item. So let's go into something that I know is on here, which is the scar. Actually, it's uh, maybe it's not on here. It should be on here. Uh, let's go into guns. Actually, let's just do this. Okay, here we go. Now, as you can see here, we've got a long list of guns that are associated here. Uh, on my chance, we're going to, on, on my server, we have um, chances to spawn all this stuff here. Where is my stuff that I've made? Uh, that's NBC pants. Should have probably had this set up beforehand, but you guys are just going to have to deal with it. Oh, this also shows you um, zombies, what they can spawn with and the attachments they can have. 
you can do the same thing. You can do, and it also tells you the cargo preset that it'll come out of. We'll get into that. And actually, you know what? I'll do that right meow. So cargo presets are, uh, oh, I forget what. I don't mess with this one a lot. So I'm going to have to dig for it. I think it's random presets. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so cargo presets or cargo is, um, cargo preset is what it, digs out of to find um, what item it's going to spawn. So think of it like Santa digging through a bag and he's got to go through the bag to find the bag that, that fits you. Uh, let's say you're a male human being and you've got like, I don't know why I said human being, but let's say you're 18 years old. Well, he's going to dig into the 18 year old bag. And he's going to get you something out. Somebody else might be this and it's going to dig into that bag to get them something out that works. So it's the same thing with random presets. Random presets says that uh, since we're digging into the food army category, we look up food army and it has a chance to spawn all this. That means that you can see the corresponding chances, which is 5%, 5%, 5%, 10%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 10%, 10% chance. So you can see that all this stuff has a chance to spawn depending on the weight that it was given due to the chance. And it will dig into that bag in order to figure out what it's going to need to maybe put on that zombie. So <clears throat> as you can see, it's got cargo preset food army, cargo preset preset food army, and ammo army. And it also has these attachments. So again, we look over here and we say ammo army. Okay, well, let's control F and look up ammo army. Ammo army is going to say you have this chance to spawn this item on this zombie. So... This is important if you want to put your items in, if you want to put certain items spawning on your zombies. If you want to ensure that your weapons are spawning uh, on a zombie, then you need to adjust your random presets to take that into account. And as you can see here, mixed villagers have all this stuff that they can spawn in with. And you can adjust all this easily by going through your inf by going through your your uh, car random presets and changing it to spawn in a certain item that you might want to have say so uh yeah so let's go back to the cfg random pre ra uh, spawnable tops <clears throat> cfg spawnable tops is important if you want to uh make certain attachments spawn on your guns. It's the same thing as random presets and spawnable types. It digs into a bag of goodies and sees what item you're going to have spawning on that uh, that uh, piece of equipment. So in the case of the HK416 OD Green, we're going to have a 100% chance of spawning a OEB buttstock, a 100% chance of spawning a ACOG optic, and a 100% chance of spawning a 30 rounds or 30 round or excuse me a 100 50% chance of always spawning a 30 round static. Now this is important if you want to uh, diversify the spawns which are on your item if on your guns. It's also very important if you want to ensure that every single one of your guns spawns with a buttstock on it and or <clears throat> rail handguards or any kind of handguards such as things like the m4 need two 100 percent chance spawns unless you want them coming out looking all derpy which you can do that if you want to there's nothing stopping you do what you do what your heart's content but if you want to make sure that your guns spawn with a 100 percent chance of spawning with a buttstock on it then you need to do what is shown here which is the uh oe buttstock and it will always spawn with a one and a one chance. Now this basically, you also want to make sure that you've got the correct file or the correct item that's going to go in there. So ensure that you're putting, if you've got a green gun, you want to make sure the green, if, and you want to make sure that a green buttstock spawns on it, you need to ensure that you've got the correct buttstock listed here, or it's just going to spawn in the wrong thing. So you'll have green guns running around with black buttstocks. I mean, I'm not sure how that really cares unless you're playing you know dress up doll but you know gun is a gun it works whatever so that's basically everything you need to know about uh cfg spawnable types and cfg random presets and uh the types.xml now 
I could show you how to do a gun, but I'm pretty sure with this video, as long as it was, and I apologize for being so long, it got more long-winded than I want. With all the stuff here, you'll actually be able to do this on your own. And again, if you have com uh, questions in regards to this, please feel free to comment below, like, and subscribe if you want more videos like this. And um, I do want to pre uh, say that in closing that this works for, this is going to be exactly the same for every single map that you play on. Every single one from Char from Charnaris to Livonia to Deer Isle to Namalsk, Takistan, all of them have the exact same thing. There's no changes in the format. All you have to do is figure out what where stuff will end up spawning and what usages and what kind of information they have in regards to how are they labeling their spawns. Tiers will usually always be the same. All you, all you need to do is figure out where these tiers are and how they correspond to your map. That's it. Uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate you taking all the time it took to make uh, to watch this through to the end. And I'll see you guys next time. My name is Somebody with CE, otherwise known as Spades. Have a wonderful day.